Today we're going to talk about using the Laplace transform to find the S domain response and the step response. Really, the S domain is really the frequency response of a system. And based on what we've done before, we can use uh, impedance to e uh, easily analyze these systems. So here we have ZR equals R and the impedance of the capacitor is 1 over C. And you can see now why I call it S domain. Even though S equals uh, J 2 pi F or J omega. So really once we start using impedances and when we take this impedance like that it really is just taking the Laplace transform. So to find the transfer function we simply find V2 as a function of V1. And by inspection, I know you love that phrase, V2 is the voltage division between ZR and ZC. And you can just write that out. You're really used to just putting resistances here, but impedance is easy as well. So then we substitute uh, the impedance equations, and we get 1 divided by SRC plus 1. Now, we can tell that RC is tau from here, but... Uh, to use the inverse uh, Laplace lookup tables, it is better to put it in this form. All right, so 1 over tau times 1 divided by S plus 1 over tau. Now, the Bode plot is really just the frequency response, the S domain. And we take this transfer function, V2 over V1, and if we substitute S for J2 pi frequency, we get the complete uh, transfer function and we can plot the magnitude and the phase. The magnitude is just calculated by uh, the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared and then we take the square root of that. Just like taking a vector uh, magnitude which is exactly what we're doing and instead of an XY plane we have a real axis and an imaginary axis. All right. And on this imaginary axis part, don't put a minus 1 there. The imaginary part is just 2 pi f. And then when you plot a Bode plot, it's really just 20 times log the magnitude of V2 over V1. Now, other, other presentations have gone over how to do a Bode plot by hand. That's not really what today is about. We want to find the step response. So the way we can find the step response is to substitute 1 over S, which is the Laplace of a step, trans, uh, step function, in for V1. In this case, now I've taken it away. Here's the transfer function. There's V1. Now I put 1 over S. And now I just use a lookup table to find the time response. Here's one that you can use. Um, but should you know even in the book it should be there although this particular transform might not be so uh, readily available but all we have to do is let a equal 1 over tau 1 over tau a uh, we just look it up and substitute and v2 equals 1 minus the exponent of t uh, divided by tau but the thing is, is you've done these problems before, and you already knew this. So uh, this is the simple thing, just to show what our, what you already know. Now, on an exam, you won't really be able to use uh, spice or anything like that, or even on a job interview, you just have to sketch things out. So how can you sketch it out? Well, in this case, you know you start at zero because at time equals zero this goes to 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and then after 5 tau, this goes to very close to 0, so V2 is 1. And then you just draw it. Now yeah, my hand was shaky along that path, but on an interview or on an exam, uh, I can really get that you know where it starts, you know where it ends, and you know how long it takes, and that this is the time axis and this is the voltage axis. Really easy. Let's do a high-pass example. 
So V2 is really still the voltage division, except we've rearranged the impedance of the, res of the resistor. And we get something a little bit different. S divided by S plus 1 over tau. Now, again, we can substitute two, uh, J2 pi F, and we can take the magnitude of that and make a Bode plot with frequency, or what we'll do is just substitute V1 for the step function. Well, if you look this up on this table, uh, you will find that you get this format. And it's a little trickier at first because it's hard to recognize that, hey, I have S times S plus 1 over tau. Well, S plus 1 over tau, that kind of looks like that. But where's my S minus B? Well, really, it's S minus 0. So in this case, B equals 0. All I have to do is substitute now A equals minus 1 over tau, and I get an exponential decay. Because not only that, look at these terms. B is 0. So even 0 times 1 at time 0, uh, time, time zero is still 0 and that's zero, then the A's cancel. Whoop. So if we plot this, we can see the step function jumps up to one, and then we have an exponential decay in five tau. Now again, um, there's a few things that might be a little concerning is that if I started off at zero capacitance, Right? How did I jump up to one like that? Well, you can think of it if nothing is stored here, there this infinite step um, has an infinite frequency, and so the impedance right at that moment in time is acting like a zero. So v1 gets put on v2 right away, and then we have our traditional exponential decay. How do we plot this? Well, I just grab the other plot, except now I'm zero. I go up instantaneously, and now I decay with 5 tau. Again, shaky hand, but no big deal. I get the idea that you know which way it's going and how long it will take to get there. Now let's start making it a little difficult. How about a first order op amp example? Well, this is easy now that we've done the hard part because this voltage here at node 2, multiply it by the gain of a non-inverting amplifier, you get V out. So V2 is what we had before this exponential decay. V out is V2 times the gain, which is now 2. You still have that, the frequency response? Multiply by 2. Well, when we plot it, now the big difference is, is the step goes up to 1 volt, but the output jumps to 2, and then exponentially decays in 5 tau. All I had to do was change the scale. Now, how about a second order op amp example? Well, let's just break it up bit by bit. Well, we know that this makes a low pass filter, and we know this RC network, we already have solved what the transfer function is for that, and we've solved what the transfer function is for this. We know that the gain of this, and we know the gain of that. So V out divided by V1 is V2 divided by V1, Vx divided by V2, V3 divided by Vx, V out divided by V3. And you first transfer function, that's what we had originally, you see for the second stage, you see non-inverting gains before. We have, again, a low-pass filter step response. And again, the same gain is 2. And in this case, T1 equals R1, C1. T2 equals R2, C2. Now, all we have to do is multiply that through for the frequency response. And everywhere there's an S, you put 2 pi uh, j 2 pi f 
and you can take the magnitude and in the time response we notice that um, we have an s times s plus a squared well if we set t1 equal to tau 2 this equation reduces to 1 over tau 1 squared plus s plus 1 over tau 1 squared so also we, we make the appropriate um, substitutions and we just get 4 and here's the time domain response now you can plot that out you don't need to find a1 a2 or anything like that because it's it's already built into these constants so if you had a plot program that's not a problem but what if you need to do this by hand or on an interview this is a little bit hard to plot well what we'll do is we find V out at the beginning and at the end all right well at the start this capacitor and this capacitor are open because before this step it's assumed to be in steady state so if this is open and this is open no current can flow through R1 because if this is an ideal op amp no current can flow in here well if no current can flow that means this voltage is equal to that voltage same thing here Th node 3 will be equal to that node and so if node 1 is at 0 then node 2 is at 0 0 times a gain of 2 is still 0 0 is here 0 times a gain of 2 it's still 0 now what about when we get up to a step of 1 volt well after a long time which is a little trickier in a second order system these are still open this will be 1 volt that'll be 1 volt multiplied by 2 you get 2 the 2 volts goes here multiplied by 2 is 4 so I know I'm gonna start at 0 and I know I'm going to end at 4 but what will the shape be Overdamped is that kind of exponential looking shape critically damped you kind of start off slow rise and then uh, kind of peter off and under damp you have some kind of overshoot and ringing so how will I draw this well let's use the transfer equation to find out all I really need is this part of it because this is actually the uh, natural response so if I pull that out multiply everything out then notice hey a is 1 B is 2 divided by tau, and C is 1 over tau 1 squared. I just use this part of the quadratic equation and find out, hey, B squared is equal to 4AC. Two roots are at the same point. That means it's critically damped, and that means all I have to do is kind of draw in that shape. Now, how long it takes it's not a that's a little bit harder to do um, but a you know a reasonable estimate would be um, if you looked at that what alpha was and B is 2 alpha right so in this case some multiple of tau is it five is it ten but it's it's not one all right and you can see that shape so you should be able to do your homework now